So they... Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Berkeley County Board of Education meeting this Tuesday, July 26, 2022. I call the meeting to order. I declare a quorum of members are present and the media has been notified. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Make the motion. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Rant to second from Ms. Tanner to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the agenda, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Ayes carry by a vote of 6-0. We need a motion to approve the minutes of the board meeting of June 28th. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, second from Mr. Wright, to approve the board meeting minutes of June 28th. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. The ayes carried by a vote of 6-0. We need a motion to approve the minutes of the budget hearing of June 28, 2022. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, second from Mr. Wright to approve the budget hearing minutes of June 28, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Well, I have it by a vote of 5-1. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the board meeting of July 18? So moved. We have a motion from Ms. Salt, Ms. Wofford, a second Mr. Ramsey, to approve the minutes of the board meeting of July 18. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Ayes carried by a vote of 6-0. We need a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Mr. Ramsey, to enter into executive session. The purposes of the executive session are as follow. 2B, a discussion of the evaluation, employment, appointment, assignment, demotion, discipline, or release of an employee or employees as needed. C, a legal update regarding a pending, threatened, or potential claim or other matters covered by attorney-client privilege. D, a discussion of negotiations incident to proposed contractual arrangements and acquisition of property. E, the general counsel's evaluation. F, 21 student attendance appeals and two out-of-district appeals. Is there any discussion? All in favor of entering into executive session, please respond by saying aye. 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 And all opposed, nay. The motion carries by a vote of 6-0. We are in executive session. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the delay. We, uh, as you, if you looked at the agenda, we had 21 student attendance appeals that we had to discuss individually, uh, as well as other business. We need a motion to enter to re-enter a regular session. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Mr. Wright, to return to regular session. Is there any discussion? All in favor of returning to regular session, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? The ayes carry by a vote of 8-0. We are in regular session. And for the record, no action was taken in executive session. The next section on the agenda is section three. Please stand and remain standing as we do the Pledge of Allegiance and the moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. The next agenda item is citizens' comments. Citizen comment procedures. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. 
Stakeholder comments are welcomed and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be regarding programs, policies, or procedures. Comments regarding complaints against employees other than district level executives or references to students other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. The board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or to halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines. Our first speaker is Representative Joe Jefferson. Welcome back to the school board meeting, Representative Jefferson. His comments will be on my vote, our vote should count. If you'll go to the uh, microphone over there, Reverend. First of all, let me say what an, what an honor and a privilege to have this opportunity of being with you this evening. The subject, of course, is my vote, our vote should count. First of all, I'd like to commend Superintendent Jackson for the work he has and his administrative team have done. To Chairman Barrow and all school board members, especially in these hard times of budgets and overcrowding. Despite the challenges, you continue to put students first. Your work does not go unnoticed. I said before you this evening, as a lifelong resident of Berkeley County, a former school board chairman of Berkeley County, and member, and an African-American male who understands the importance of every vote being honored and valued. I'm here as a resident of District 7, and I want you to know my vote and the votes cast by all citizens should count in the manner in which they were intended. Just recently, a law was passed in the General Assembly that keeps my vote and the votes of citizens across this county from counting in the manner they were intended. Nearly two years ago, I cast my vote for the school board official serving District 7 to serve the designated, clearly established four-year term. But I'm dismayed to know and now understand that the school year term, board members elected to this seat will now only serve a two-year term because of the law that has been passed. Now, I want you to know that I voted against, I repeat, I voted against Senate Bill S-910, which was later signed into law by the governor. Folks, it's all about the numbers, and I understand that. We were simply outnumbered and outvoted. Not only is the sitting board member from District 7 impacted, but so are the other board members who were elected in 2020. Even more importantly, every citizen of Berkeley County who voted for school board members in 2020 are being impacted because their vote only has half the weight of the votes that were cast for school board members in 2018 in other areas of the county. In other words, the board members elected in 2018 have, uh, will have served four, four, four full years by the time of the 2022 election in November. The full term for which they were elected, there was no law created to keep those school board members from serving a full term or keeping the votes of their constituents from being fully honored. So what is the reason for the votes of constituents in some areas to the county fully, while my vote and those of constituents in other areas do not? Please understand, this issue is not just about elected officials, it is about the voting rights of all citizens and making sure that the will of the people is honored. Representative Jefferson, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, but your time has expired. It has expired. So, yes, sir. Thank you so very much. We'd love for you to return and to continue your comments. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. Our next speaker is uh, Martha P. Dixon. The nature of the current concerns or comments are focused on students. 
welcome Ms. Dixon. Mr. Barrow, Mr. Jackson, other board members, the cabinet, and everyone in person and remotely, good evening. My name is Martha P. Dixon, a retired educator with 36 years of experience, all in Berkeley County. The website states this, the Berkeley County Board of Education sets policies, provides sufficient funding, and monitors all instructional programs to ensure quality and equal education opportunities for all students. As a new school year approaches, I would like for all of us, parents and family members, board members, district and school level administrators, teachers, clerical workers, aides, custodians, bus drivers, and everyone connected to Berkeley County School District not to lose the focus, the students. When we begin to create our own agendas, we lose this focus, and our students are the ones who suffer the most. No one agrees with every issue, but we can agree to disagree and do it cordially while working for the betterment of our school district. We have to do what is best for the children. I thank you for your willingness to serve on the board, and I encourage you to keep our children as the focus. Everything revolves around them. If we start to fracture and begin to follow our several agendas, no one wins and our students will endure the consequences. I am sure no one would want the same fate as Haman the Agagite. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Dixon. Our next speaker is Christy Dixon. And her concern or comment is concerning discipline policy. Welcome, Ms. Dixon. Good evening. I was reviewing the changes to the Student Behavior Code. And in going over some of these changes, some things really stood out to me. They were red flags. And I wanted to bring this to your attention. On the first page, it says, at any time or in any place, including off school grounds and during non-school hours, where conduct directly interferes with the operations or general welfare of the school students, that there can be some disciplinary action. I believe this is too vague, and it gives the appearance and leaves open the possibility that the school or the district could overreach into the private lives of students and families. There's also a couple of, on page four, the administrator will meet with the student, will meet with the student if necessary, the parent. The parent is always to be included. You don't exclude the parent and violate their parental rights. On page six, an administrator will notify the student's parent or legal guardian as soon as possible. I think this should say immediately. The parent should always be contacted first. I know those of you who are parents would not want someone interfering or intervening, especially in something as far as a disciplinary action, if they weren't contacted first. Throughout here, I also see that you are implementing restorative practices. And I didn't know if you were aware of that restorative practices is bad policy and it's a failed experiment. I know a couple meetings back you had some experts here touting the benefits and the greatness of restorative practices. But it's a discipline reform that infuses equity into discipline. And that's an exclusionary form of discipline and it actually hurts kids. The model for, for this type of discipline, restorative practices, the model was Broward County, Florida. Are you familiar with Broward County, Florida? In 2019, as a result of restorative practices, they had the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, Parkland, Florida. Please reconsider this. Restorative practices has no place in our schools. 
Restorative justice is the root of this, and I beg you to reconsider, please. One other thing about S-910, though, while I'm here, to the board members. Has any board member asked the current chairman how he was able to get a carve-out for his seat in, legis in this legislation because that wasn't in the original draft? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Our for, uh, fourth and final speaker is Ms. Sharina Haynes, and the concern or comment is Bill S-910. Welcome, Ms. Haynes. Good evening. Good evening. My, my name is Sharina Haynes. I'm a resident of District 4 here in Berkeley County. I would like to thank Superintendent Jackson and all of the Berkeley County School Board for all that you have done for us for the last two years and beyond. And I come to you as a concerned citizen and as the president of the Goose Creek Branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People to express on record our extreme disappointment in the passage of the S-910 bill and its lack of community input. The bill was sponsored by Senator Larry Grooms, who has gone on record to say that there was no community input regarding the law and that he didn't see the need for it. We find that very discouraging and we want the board to know on record that we disapprove of this bill as it stands. That's now unfortunately law. It's alarming that lawmakers would make such drastic changes without explaining to the community why it's necessary. As I see it, elected officials should have transparency with their constituents and all those who would be affected by the passage of this bill. We are outraged on the passage of the S-910 bill and asking the community to judge your elected officials by their vote when, it's, when they're up for re-election. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Haynes. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is item number five. Any action is required for items from executive session we have an extensive uh, list of things to go through. Uh, entertain a uh, motion or motions on the student attendance appeals. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to deny student appeals one through three and five through 21. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Uh, Tanner, a second from Mr. McQuillan, I believe, to de deny the appeals of students number one through three and five through 21. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. The motion carries by a vote of 7-1. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve student appeal number four. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from uh, Mr. Ramsey, to approve the attendance appeal of student number four. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-0. Mr. Chairperson, the matter of students number one and two for out-of-district appeals, I move to grant the appeals. Second. We have a motion uh, from Mr. McQuillan, a second from Mr. Ramsey, to approve the out-of-district appeals of students one and two. What this basically involves is students that are out-of-district requesting to come to Berkeley County but they're having to pay the tuition, the state tuition, uh, out of pocket to, to come to Berkeley County. So we have a, a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? The ayes have it by a vote of 8-0. And we have several other motions. We'll, uh, we'll start with Ms. Wofford. Mr. Chair, I move to accept the personnel recommendations of the administration as discussed in executive session. I have a motion second. from Ms. Wofford, a second from Ms. Tanner, to accept the personnel recommendations from the administration as discussed in executive session. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-0. Mr. Chairman, I move to extend the current contract for general counsel until August 31st, 2022, as discussed in executive session. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Mr. Wright, to extend the contract of the general counsel until August 
31st. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 7-1. Mr. McQuillan. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Robert Benven as the assistant principal of Stratford High School with the starting date of July 27, 2022. Second. We have a motion from Mr. McQuillan and a second from Ms. Wofford to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Mr. Robert Benven as the assistant principal of Stratford High School with the starting date of July 27, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Congratulations, Mr. Benven. Stand up. Please introduce uh, your family, guests, and so forth, and we'll have a picture. <laughs> Could you, uh, we want to have a family picture, please? Could you do that? Yeah. Come on up. Congratulations again. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ryan Rosendahl as the assistant principal of Cane Bay High School with a starting date of July 27, 2022. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Tanner, second from Ms. Maroon to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Mr. Ryan Rosendahl as the assistant principal of Cane Bay High School with the starting date of tomorrow. <laughs> Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Congratulations, Mr. Rosendahl. And Congratulations. Y'all come on up here to pick. And they're staff members of Cane Bay High too, right? I, I see them back there. I see them. <laughs> Here's Nick. We got the whole, most of the administrative team coming up. Yes. <laughs> I think they already got one. It's a good looking team. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Bridget Creedon as the assistant principal of Cane Bay High School with the starting date of July 27th, 2022. Second. We have a motion uh, from Ms. Maroon and a second from Ms. Tanner to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ms. Bridget Creedon as the assistant principal of Cane Bay High School with the starting date of July 27th, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion carries. Congratulations, Ms. Breach. Need your cane bay crew. Yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Stephanie Piegler as the assistant principal of Stratford High School starting July 27, 2022. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Wofford, a second from Ms. Marone to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ms. Stephanie Piegler as the assistant principal of Stratford High School with a starting date of July 27, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-0. Congratulations, Ms. Piegler. Congratulations. Come on up. That's nice. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Tammy Alessandro as the assistant principal of Goose Creek Elementary School with a starting date of July the 27th, 2022. Second. Ms. Tanner. We have a motion from Mr. Ramsey, a second from Ms. Tanner, to, move, to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ms. Tammy Alessandro as the assistant principal of Goose Creek Elementary School with a start date of July 27, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 8-0. Congratulations, Ms. Alessandro.
Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Kendall Lloyd as the Innovative Learning Coordinator of Technology with a starting date of July 27, 2022. Second. We have a uh, motion from Dr. Wakefall, a second from, I couldn't quite, Ms. Uh -huh. Tanner, to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Kendall Lloyd as the Innovative Learning Coordinator at Technology with a starting date of July 27, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously, 8-0. Congratulations, Ms. Lloyd. Congratulations. Come on up. Get a picture. By the way, those children have been great. They have. It's down for the count. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you now. Aww. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Cassandra Cowdery as the coordinator of innovation for visual and performing arts with a starting date of July 27, 2022. Second. We have a recommendation, excuse me, a uh, motion from Dr. Wigfall, second from Ms. Maroon, to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ms. Cassandra Cowdery as the coordinator of innovation for visual and performing arts with a starting date of July 27th, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion carries 8-0. Congratulations. Ms. Cowdery. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Dr. Andrea Sturkey as the Chief Human Resources Officer with a starting date effective after release from her contract. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Mr. Wright to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Dr. Andrea Sturkey as the Chief Human Resources Officer with a starting date effective after release from her contract. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. We have a motion, uh, we have a vote of 6-2, I believe. Is that correct? The motion carries by a vote of 6-2. to two. Congratulations, Dr. Sturkey. That, sir, that was five to three. Pardon? Five to three. Five to three. It was five, five to three. three. Okay. Yes. Maybe I should, uh, those individuals who, who voted in the affirmative for the motion, please raise your hand. Okay. And in the negative? Okay, the vote, I, I apologize, the vote was five three. Dr. Sturkey, congratulations again. Introduce you.
Congratulations. Let's get a picture. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you uh, came for the uh, announcements of the new positions. If you'd like to, to adjourn yourselves at this time, it's, a, it's, an, it's an excellent time. Uh, the board will continue with the regular business shortly. Hey. Congratulations. Good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I was She's on the news. I've seen her I think she She's here for the news today, yeah. That's the that's the and uh, huh? I think she's married to um Troy. <laughs> that's the Yeah. Is the is that the woman who said I got a sweetheart in this here? Yeah, yeah. Like no, he's cool, yeah. Her. He's he's um she let me uh, if I want to come play golf again. Yeah. He was actually honest because the deal was that uh yeah. He busted a lot of his fellow Yemen's Hall people that were getting four percent lower tax rate when they went to primary home. Because <laughs> he's like, well, yeah, we need to review this because yeah. this they ain't living here. That yeah. was about fifteen years ago. Yeah. But yeah, he's real cool, dude. I like him. The next item on the agenda is uh, number six. Temporary committee assignments if a quorum for any committee is not present. That's not necessary as if we, Because we do have a quorum for all of the committees here this evening um, But I will call a recess from regular session so that the committees may convene and this evening Mr. Ramsey will be taking the place of Ms. Littleton as the chair of the committee of A&I so Mr. Ramsey I am calling the Committee on Academics and Innovation to order. I declare there is a quorum of committee members present and note that the media has been given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion to approve the agenda and a second to approve the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion is approved by a vote of two to zero. Our first item on the agenda is policy to testing programs test security. First reading, Ms. Diane Driggers, you are recognized. Good afternoon, members of the board, Chairman Barrow and Mr. Jackson. If it's okay, I was going to ask Dana to come up. Dana is our testing coordinator, our director of testing. And <coughs> any questions for the policy? The testing policy? Okay. What is the pleasure of the committee? I make a motion to approve the first reading of policy two, testing program, test security as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion, respond by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is approved by a vote of two to zero. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. It's Dana Cousins. Thank you. 
The second item on the agenda is policy JICDA, Student Behavior Code. Ms. Heather Taylor, you are recognized. Superintendent Ramsey, sorry for that, for Chair Ramsey, Superintendent Jackson. Almost tried to give your job away, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the policy was last revised in 2010. The policy is presented with minor revisions to accompany the requested changes to the administrative role so that both will be updated simultaneously. Um, we are asking for the second reading for approval of adoption. Okay. What is the pledge of the committee? I make the motion to approve the second reading of policy JICDA, Student Behavior Code, as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is approved by a vote of two to zero. Our third agenda item is Administrative Rule JICDA-R, Student Behavior Code, Ms. Taylor, you're recognized again. Yes, sir. The rule was last revised in 2019. The updated version seeks to incorporate the latest changes to the Department of Education regulation. Revisions include reclassifying level one misconduct from disorderly to behavioral misconduct to align with law enforcement terminology. These regulatory changes were to ensure that law enforcement is not activated for pure administrative tasks. Revisions also include language to appropriately handle improper use of technology in light of the enhanced use of technology by students both on and off campus. The proposed changes also provide notice to parents and guardians, students, and the community regarding the discipline process for students with disabilities. Other changes have been made to update language throughout the policy. We are asking for a second reading of approval for this adoption. What is the pleasure of the committee? Chairman, I make the motion to approve the second reading of Administrative Rule JICDA-R, Student Behavior Code, as presented. Second. Any discussion? Uh, briefly, uh, my vote is that I'm going to cast on this is based on some of the language I do not like. Um, the send this uh, policy. All in favor of the motion? For you, call Go ahead. You can vote it out of committee, then it goes to a full board vote later. That's right. If you want to get it out of committee, and then that way the full board can vote. Well, it can still, whatever. are you sure? I think it can come out of committee even if I vote against it, can it? Not if it doesn't have the votes. Yeah. No, it will fail. It has to be, it has to be an affirmative vote in order tie, to proceed. A tie fails. Oh, a tie fails. A tie fails. Okay. Uh, and right. we also, the spirit Mr. Of getting Mr. it out of committee, uh, all in favor of this motion, respond by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is approved by a vote of two to zero. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. The fourth item on the agenda is spring 2022 textbooks adoption. Second reading. Dr. Anthony Dixon, you are recognized. Good evening, Superintendent Jackson. Uh, board Chair Barrow and ANI Committee Chair Ramsey and school board members. On Tuesday, December 14th, 2021, the South Carolina Department of Education approved funding for um, multiple instructional material adoptions. The Academics and Innovation Department then organized BCSD committees of teachers selected by the principals to review the new options available from the State Department. After a thorough examination to ensure alignment with standards and instructional models, each school vote submitted a vote with their selection. Currently, the textbooks in use are from previous adoptions. According to board policy IFFA, IFAA, the adoption of textbooks in Berkeley County School District will be made by committees composed of classroom teachers, subject area coordinators, and directors based upon the recommendations of the principals of the district. The adoption process was supervised by the Director of Curriculum Instruction as well as the Chief of Academics and Innovation. All textbooks must be approved by the board and we bring for, um, to you for consideration uh, the following textbooks in the areas of science, social studies, and CTE. They're still on the back. What is the pleasure of the committee? Chairman, I make the motion to approve the second reading of the South Carolina State Department of Education instructional materials approved by the BCSD committee caravan selected by the individual school administration. Second. 
Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is approved by a vote of two to zero. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this committee meeting so that the Finance and Capital Planning Committee meeting can begin. Do Make we have a second? Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion is approved by a vote of two to zero. I'm calling the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning to order. I declare there are a quorum of committee members present and ask, has the media been given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act? Yes, it has. Do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Motion passes by a vote of two to zero. The first agenda item is out-of-state travel. Ms. Smith, you are right. <coughs> Good evening, Chairman McQuillan, Superintendent Jackson, and board members. Um, administration is requesting approval of out-of-state travel as presented. Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. The second agenda item is RFP 660-2122, Technology Security Advisory Services. Ms. Smith, you are again recognized. Thank you. I would like to ask Marcy Abrahamson to join me at the podium to discuss the next three items. Good evening, Committee Chair McQuinlan, Chairman Barrow, Superintendent Jackson, and members of the board. Tonight we're presenting for your um, approval RFP 660 um, 2122 for Technology Security Advisory Services. This solicitation was conducted to secure a contract for reliable, cost effective security services that include the creation of a security roadmap, multiple vulnerability scans over the course of a year, and review and refinement of the information security policies and procedures. We received two responsive bids and one non-responsive bid. The initial contract term will be one year with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms. The highest ranked offer after evaluation was Lockstep Technology Group for an estimated one-year contract value of $49,500 and an estimated five-year contract value of $247,500. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Eyes have it by a vote of two to zero. The third agenda item is FPB 663-2122 HVAC filters. Ms. A or Marcy, sorry. <laughs> They're fine. Um, we conducted a fixed price bid to secure a supplier to provide pleated MERV 10 and HVAC filters for the use of all district schools and facilities. The bid included various typical sizes of half inch, one inch, and two inch filters and established a minimum fixed price for supply and delivery of the, of the filters to our facilities warehouse. Um, the current recommended awardee is Crewkel Company Incorporated for an estimated one year contract value of $300,000 and um, the estimated five-year contract value is $1,500,000. Move to approve. Second. Quick, quick question is this. Do we have like an actual maintenance schedule? Is this something that is just recommended to do at a certain time? Like a lot of times the folks that manufacture these things say you need a new filter when you may not necessarily need one. We actually um, have a routine schedule for the replacement. And then also when COVID came, when we have a COVID positive classroom, we change out those filters as well. Okay. All right, I'll call the question. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Motion passes by a vote of two to zero. The fourth agenda item is RFP 662, Watch Fire Digital Signs. Ms. Er, Ms. Abrahamson, you're recognized. Um, yes, sir. RFP 662-2122 for Watchfire Digital Signs was conducted to establish a term contract to purchase digital, digital marquees to purchase on an as-needed basis. The initial project is to replace the marquee at Sangaree Middle School after the road improvements in that area required the, required the original sign to be dismantled. The contract includes the design, installation, and repair of Watchfire Digital Signs. We only had one responsive offer. 
um, and it is from Signs Unlimited of Lake City. The initial project at Sangaree Middle is $37,971, and the potential five-year contract value is unknown um, since we don't know exactly how many projects we'll be doing, and each sign is uniquely designed, and so pricing can vary, but it usually stays around that thirty to 35000 mark. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Ms. Happy. Abramson, I would like to, uh, to request one for Timberland High School. It's, it is non-digital. Yes, sir. We are trying to slowly but surely get those um, switched out as we have funding availability. Thank you. The next and last agenda I item. I want two signs at Timberland, one on the road when you come up and one at the front when you get to the front door. I would like two signs, please. Well, thank you. <laughs> the next agenda item is EBCB safety plans and drills. Second reading, Mr. McDowell, you are recognized. Good evening, Chair McQuillan, committee members, Superintendent Jackson. The administration is asking that policy EBCB be approved for second reading in the adoption process. This is a new policy mandated, mandated by the state, effective July 2nd, 2018. The initial deadline for adoption was for the 2021 school year after the State Department of Education, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, and the Office of the State Fire Marshal developed guidelines. However, the deadline was extended due to the pandemic. The state has alerted all districts that the policy must be approved for this school year. Moved to approve. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it by a vote of two to zero. At this time, I'd make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. We are adjourned. I'm calling the Committee on Human Resources to order. I declare there is a quorum of committee members present and note that the media has been given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Marone and a second by Ms. Wofford. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 It's approved unanimously. The first agenda item is policy GBGB, -GB, workplace safety, first reading. Ms. Ashley Smith, you're recognized. Thank you, good evening again. This is the first reading of policy GBGB, -GB, workplace safety. This policy was last revised in 2018. The updated version seeks to properly designate the contract persons responsible for safety concerns, excuse me, the contact persons responsible for safety concerns. The revisions also clarify the procedures once a safety concern has occurred. Other minor changes were made to update the language. What's the pleasure of the committee? Move to approve. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Walford, a second by Ms. Marone. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it unanimously. Second agenda item is policy GBGD, workers' compensation. Second reading, Ms. Ashley Smith, you're again recognized. Thank you. This is the second reading of policy GBGD, workers' compensation. This policy was last revised in 2020. The updated version seeks to include language regarding the third-party plan administrator that the district works with to process claims. The policy also revises the district administrator responsible for approving lower reserve tiers. What's the pleasure of the committee? I make the motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes have it unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you. Third agenda item is policy GCCAC, Family and Medical Leave Act, second reading. Dr. Natasha Wright, you're recognized. Good evening, Madam Chair, Superintendent Jackson, and board members. We are asking for second reading approval to revise policy GCCAC, Family Medical Leave Act. 
The policy was last revised in 2018. The proposed revisions include providing medical authorization to return to full duties instead of light duty assignments. A section was also added that FMLA would be utilized in conjunction with workers' compensation program for employees injured in the workplace. Language was also incorporated clarifying that vacation and sick time will not accrue while on catastrophic leave. Are there any questions? What's the pleasure of the committee? I move to approve policy GCCAC Family and Medical Leave Act, FMLA second reading. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it unanimously. Um, the fourth agenda item is the 2022-2023 salary book draft. Dr. Natasha Wright, you're recognized again. Thank you, Madam Chair. We are asking for approval of the 2022-2023 salary book as presented. Are there any questions? What's the pleasure of the committee? I make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 salary book as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it unanimously. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Thank you, Dr. Wright. You. Sorry. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn and return to regular session. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, <coughs> please say aye. 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 The ayes have it unanimously. I'm calling for a return to regular session for the so, committee reports. So moved. We're in a regular, regular session. Uh, the next item on the agenda are reports from the standing committees. First, a report from the Committee on Academics and Innovation. Chair Michael Ramsey. She, uh, make the motion. I'll second it to go back. We don't have to. Oh. We don't have to. We don't All right, have well, to. I was just doing it anyway. I just wanted Thank to say a anyway. second because I never got to say it again. Yeah, the chair can, can <laughs> convene. And once, once we're in session, they can. Good. Sorry Mr. About Chairman, that. the Committee on Academics and Innovation met earlier this evening, and on the recommendation of the committee, I move to approve first reading of Policy 2, Testing Programs, Testing Security, as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries 8-7-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of policy JICDA, Student Behavior Code, as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? Is there any way we can amend these to address the, the person that spoke in citizen comment to make sure that parents do get notified immediately and that they are involved in the disciplinary meeting? I know, I know I can make that motion, but I want to kind of discuss it to see if there's a interest with the majority of the board members. I, I wouldn't disagree that parents should be included. I agree with you. We can always uh, ask the administration to... Uh, but isn't that a process that they are doing currently, but it's not stated in policy? It's been so long that I was involved in this. We'll, have, we'll ask the superintendent to address this okay. or his designee. I, I, I think it's a matter of parents are contacted, but I think it's a matter of when or how it's stated there in the policy. Mm -hmm. um, it, immediately versus, I uh, believe the language was as soon as possible. And so I think that's part of the discrepancy or part of the concern. So yeah, parents the, are communicated with, uh, it's just a matter of how it's stated in the policy. And in the other language was it says, parents shall be involved if necessary. I think it just say parents shall be involved and remove that language to make it so that it's not discretionary as to whether parents are involved. L let me uh, revert back to some of my prior experience with this. Generally speaking, if you have an issue that's brought to you as an administrator, you don't necessarily want to call the parents right offhand. You want to look into f and find out precisely what happened. You don't necessarily just want to talk with one individual. You do a brief uh, investigation so that when you call a parent, you can at least inform them of what you what you found already. That's not to say that you've made a decision as to the judgment whether there's any disciplinary action or not. But there is. It's almost imperative when a parent asks you a question 
and you don't have the answer, you can only say, well, all I'm doing is calling you because there's been a referral. And then, you know, it, it's a back and forth type situation. So, uh, but absolutely, absolutely. Anytime there's an, I'm saying you should always inform the parent. Uh, sometimes you need to do a little investigative work before you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if or not any disciplinary action was deemed necessary, you should always inform the parent. Dr. Richardson keeps trying to say something. So I just want to say the as soon as possible language is specifically in the criminal conduct portion of it. And that's because if there's a gun found or something like that, law enforcement has to be found, notified immediately. And, while, and it has to immediately be turned over to law enforcement and then parents are notified throughout that process as soon as possible. If you say immediately, it impedes the, mm -hmm. the criminal um, the, depending on what the level is and the, the necessary involvement of other parties prior to parents getting there. So that is why it's the, as soon as possible instead of immediately when whatever is found is on the criminal level in, in that circumstance. What was that language about if necessary, ad, the administration has discretion <coughs> about notifying the parent? And, and that's related to meeting with the parents, not that they won't be notified. It's the meeting will be with the student and if necessary, the parent, but it's not that they won't be notified. And that's on a level two. So it's not that parents won't be notified, it's just that the initial meeting, once the investigation takes place, always happens with the student to, to, to find out what's going on and then the parents are notified. So parents are not necessarily um, at that meeting. So. So let me just put this, so I, I think it's just the kind of, the way things are happening and people are just, as a parent you hear one thing and then you have situations that happen in schools and the media and you have things that happened like in Texas and I, I think that gets everybody like upset, right? Like uh, that's my concern. Let's just, let's just talk about it, perception's reality, right? So you have something that happens in school with a student at 10 o'clock in, in the morning and a teacher has to have a conversation with the student, student. right? They're gonna have a con Johnny. Please don't do that. That that could be the the immediate conversation, and then they're going to talk to the parent. I think is what how they're trying to word it. So it's it's kind of like how how do how do we word all of that? You know what I mean? Like so they're gonna have to talk to Johnny before they talk to the parent. But if there is something major going on, I don't want them to talk to my child about something without involving me too. Do, you know what I mean? So I think it's we're we're trying to. I could see what I don't want to point. I could see what the our public, the person who made that public comment. I can see what what they're saying. Like if there's something major going on with my child, I want to be there because I want to be able to see what's going on because I want to have that conversation with them to correct them because I want to make sure that they're on the right path with them with the schools. But if it's something minor, I don't necessarily have to be there. So I think we have to figure out how we're going to do this language. Right, but the language says that they will confer with the parent. It's just that that initial meeting, the parent may not be there. Because we have to allow administration to handle our students. And then, and, and I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. I believe it's our turn. Thank you. The administration needs to handle our students, and then when they get a moment in time, they're going to involve us. If it's something serious, they're not going to go forward without us. I, I would not expect that either. I have, I have children in Berkeley County Schools also. So the wording is there that protects everyone. That's what I'm understanding. Right. Parents will, uh, discipline will not be meted out without parents being con confer uh, discussed, the discussion happening with the parent. Because I'm not disagreeing. I agree. I want to be there when my child is dealing with something also. But we send our children to school trusting our administrators. 
That is what we're doing, and our, and our teachers and the people within the schools. That's what we're doing here. So thank you, Dr. Richardson. So what's happening? So where are we? And so do we there was, the there was one other point made that I think needs to be addressed just so that the board knows. It was the um, off-campus behavior. So if bullying or something occurs off campus, if we don't have that language in because it comes to the school site, you can't address it. And so that is where the language of off-campus behavior that directly affects the school environment comes into play. How does that square with the recent Supreme Court case, though, where students, you know, posting stuff and doing things outside of school that could have a direct effect on the school, arguably, was deemed unconstitutional? So that specific, it, there was no tie to the school environment. That is what the Supreme Court case said. If there is no tie in that case, there was no, um, the school was never mentioned, the, the child was not wearing any district paraphernalia, the, no district devices were utilized, and so that is a direct off-campus behavior that did not have a tie to the school environment. So you have to have a direct tie to the school environment and all so in, in other words and there was no significant reaction afterwards that had led the administration to Im implement any kind of discipline so well there's a scenario mr mcquillan and you know i've dealt with this before i mean if there's a if there's an off-campus situation and somebody on social media or text or whatever sends a you know, this isn't over. I'm going to get you tomorrow at school. Yeah, that's different. That's, yeah, a, that, that's a clear case. I that's a that. clear case, and it's also something that the administration, if not, if they don't take under consideration, if they, if it comes to them, then they could be liable uh, for concerns and for you know litigation. So that's that's all I'm saying is that when something happens in a community that will possibly and ultimately create a, a, a situation at school, the school administration should look into it and find out the, the legitimacy of it or if it was a prank or whatever, but it should investigate it and obviously notify the parents. That's just common sense. How, how was the language word in the policy in a direct tie to the school? What did it say? At any time or any place, including off school grounds and during non school hours where conduct directly interferes with the operation of general, well, general, general excuse me, welfare of the school students or staff. So if a child gets in a fight with another student and he's wearing a Philip Simmons or Goose Creek shirt, does that affect the general welfare of the students at the school, even though it happened off campus and outside of school hours? No, because that would not be, more than likely, would not be brought back to the school environment. So if a child sends, uh, makes a post that says, tomorrow I'm bringing a gun to school, yeah, the matter. next day they need to address that. Or if a child is posting and bullying a student and it comes into the environment the next day, they need to be able to address that. Mr. McQuillan also depends on the severity of the matter. So yeah, no, that's true. If that's it's just true. a regular fight, no, but if it's a... It's just, it, I don't think it's, there's not a bright line rule. There's, there's, there's at probably the bus some stop. gray. Right, if it's at the bus stop, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's school grounds, basically. And so, but that is up to the administration to prove that it does directly affect the school environment. So we have had some discussion. We'll call the question. All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. Uh, Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Okay, those that raise their hand in the affirmative. I just call any other discussion. I mean, we've already called the question now. So you need to have more discussion. So did we agree that, because, hold on, I, I, you need more discussion, because there's just like conflicting. So we just agreed that we need to change it to immediately, and now we're saying that no. it's going back to where originally was. We're not changing was the beginning. language. We're calling the question on this policy. Okay, for the approval of the policy. And, and so let me clarify, the policy is not the, the, where the language was questioned, it's the rule where the language was questioned. So is this both the policy and the rule, or? Because right now you're on the policy and that's not where the. 
The distinction is very simple. The, the policy is the policy. The administrative rule is how the policy is enforced. Okay, so the issue is probably, Mr. Ramsey, you were questioning how the rule would be enforced, which was the administrative rule and not the policy. But you could question both. You could, you could discount both of them. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, because the rule determines how the policy is going to be enforced. So we're just looking yes. the rule right If you don't like the rule, no, we're, we're looking at the policy. policy. The rule is next. The rule is next. See, in the, in the policy you have the stated policy and then you have how you in, not just interpret it, but how you act upon it. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, the process of how, it's, how the policy is enforced is the administrative rule. And it, it coexists together. Like two pair, like a pair of gloves. You got to have one with it. You can't have one without the other. You can't have a policy and not know how to enforce it. So, uh, is there any other discussion? We really can't dissect this at this point in time. I think what we have to do is either approve it or deny it and let the administration. Uh, okay. Come back. So let me clarify one more time. You can have the policy. Without a rule, you can't have a rule without that's, the policy. That's what I just said. So we'll have to take it, one. Not exactly. <laughs> not exactly. So you can't approve the policy and without approving the rule. That, right. Because you can have a policy. You can have a policy. You cannot have a rule. The rule accompanies the policy. But you do not have to. You can so, approve the policy. I guess I was talking about how to actually enforce the policy. Because if you have a policy and it doesn't tell you how to do it, the administrative rule tells you how to, how to make sure that the policy is enforced. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. So what we need to decide is, is the board going to approve the policy mm -hmm. at this point? Because we're not debating the semantics anymore. If, the, if you don't like the semantics, you can vote no. And then have the administration bring it back. Okay. Is it, that's, okay. So, so you feel what I'm saying? Yes. So okay, so we're going to call the question. All in favor of the motion, which was to adopt this policy, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. 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 Okay, for those who, raised, who uh, said yes, raise your hand to adopting the policy. One, two, three, four. And so the vote is four, three. Uh, the, the motion carries. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of Administrative Rule JICDA-R, Student Behavior as Presented. We have a recommendation from the committee, no second is required. Is there any discussion? This is basically the administrative rule of the policy. All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. 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 If you voted in the affirmative, raise your hand. Okay. The negative uh, votes no. So the, the administrative rule is not carried. It is denied. By a vote of two to five. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of the South Carolina State Department of Education instructional materials approved by the BCSD committee caravans selected by the individual school administrations. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. Aye. Aye, any opposed, nay? The motion carries by a vote of 7-0. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Okay, Mr. Mr. McQuillan. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning met earlier this evening, and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve out-of-state travel as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 7-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of RFP 660-2122 for Technology Security Advisory Services to Lockstep Technology Group for an initial contract term of one year with an estimated value of $49,500 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms for an estimated contract value of $247,500.
We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 7 0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of FPB 663-2122 for HVAC filters to Crew Kell Company Incorporated for an initial one-year term with an estimated value of $300,000 with an option to renew for four additional one-year terms for an estimated total contract value of $1.5 million. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries unanimously, 7-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of RFP 660-2122 for Watchfire Digital Signs to Signs Unlimited of Lakes rated for an initial project value of $37,971 for a term of one year with an option to renew for four additional one-year terms to purchase additional digital marquees for various locations based on available funding. We have a recommendation from committee. Required, is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 7-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of policy EBCB safety plans and drills as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 7-0. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Human Resources, Chair Kirsten Tanner. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Human Resources met earlier this evening and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the first reading of policy GBGB -GB, workplace safety as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. You know, second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 7 0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of policy GBGB. -GB. Workers' compensation as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 7 0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the second reading of policy GCCAC, Family and Medical Leave Act, as presented. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 7-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the 2022-2023 salary book draft as presented and the updates highlighted in yellow. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 7-0. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. Next item on the agenda is superintendent's report, Mr. Jackson. Greetings, Mr. Chair, board members, cabinet members, members of the audience. Um, we're about just shot three weeks away from the start of school. Um, and today actually marked for me uh, the official end of summer. We kicked off our summer leadership, um, our annual summer leadership training for our administrators. Uh, summer leadership provides the opportunity for our administrators to collaborate, receive information, and professional development for a uh, necessary for a great start to the school year. I had the opportunity to welcome our administrators uh, this morning and share the, this year's vision uh, for strengthening our fundamentals uh, to include expanding our safety and security and implementing our instructional framework. Uh, we're getting back to basics this year and ensuring that our instructional foundation is strong, teaching and learning practices are consistent across the district. Uh, Berkeley County is good and we're well on our way to being great. Um, and I'd like to close out, I know this is brief, but I'd like to close out with a reminder about our One Berkeley Festival, so save that date. Our One Berkeley Festival is, is back uh, August 13th, it's a Saturday, Saturday, August 13th, just before the start of school from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, we will host our One Berkeley Back to School Festival after a two-year hiatus. Um, it's a fantastic community event. We're very excited to welcome our families uh, back to the Monk's Corner Regional Recreation Center. It's right there down the road uh, to, uh, for school supplies, uh, community resources, uh, school bands will be there, jump castles, food trucks. Uh, be a lot of fun and excitement for our families, a lot of fun and excitement for our students uh, getting ready to go back to school. Uh, we'll also hand out book bags filled with school supplies uh, to our students at the festival while supplies last. So please make plans to join us on August 13th from 9 to 12 p.m. at the Monk's Corner Regional Recreation Center. 
Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Just a few uh, uh, dates that are uh, very important. The first is extremely important is this Saturday, the board retreat uh, information session at 1P. Uh, the public is invited. It's Saturday, July 30th. We will have breakfast at 8.30 and the meetings begin at 9 and conclude at 4 o'clock. A lot of very, very important information and subject matter will be discussed at this meeting. Uh, it's important for the board members, if at all possible, to be present, and certainly the, the public is, is as well invited. Summer graduation is at Goose Creek High School, August the 8th, that's creeping up on us, and that is at 5.30 in the Goose Creek High School Auditorium. The summer step finale is at Marrington Middle School, Thursday, July 28th, and starts at 1 o'clock. Is there any other information any other board members would like to share? If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Tanner, second from Ms. Wofford to adjourn. Is there any discussion? All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.